Hey everybody, welcome to Sketch Party, day two of two. Happy Tuesday, everyone. How are ye? Hope you're doing well. I see a lot of good friends in the chat. We've got Jason, Stephen, Susie Chelsea looks really excited to be here. And that makes me excited to be here too. Good to see everybody. If you are new to Sketch Party, I'm Kathleen. I'm a designer and illustrator and live stream host here at Adobe. And I'm just going to be hanging out with you for the next hour or so. We're going to be playing in Fresco. Uh, if you don't know what Fresco is, it's a drawing and painting app that is made just for you for mobile devices. So we got it on the iPad here today. We can use it on Windows uh, Surface devices as well. Diseño, hello. Ekrami, Sam Peterson, how's it going? Johanna, Paloma, good to see you. If you're over on YouTube watching, come on over to Behance. That's where the party is, be.net slash live. What's up, Corey? So I'm going to pop over to my iPad super quick so we can go over what we did yesterday. Oops, I disappeared. There we go. What's up, Larry? Oh, this is my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram if you want. <laughs> but we want fresco. There we go. Let me bring this over in front of me. Yeah, 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 party. Who has a hydrating beverage to drink for the party? I got some water and a water bottle. No tea today. No risk of spillage. <laughs> Chance says I've got my iPad and pen at the ready. I can't wait. That's awesome, Chance. Super cool. Paloma says Sprite. Ooh, nice. I had a little bit of ginger ale earlier. It's feeling real naughty. Treated myself to a soda pop. Larry, first time on here. Cool. Steve's got tea. So uh, if you were not here yesterday, what we did was I offered all of you. Let me turn these layers off so I can show you. I offered all of you four uh, landscape photographs for me to do a study of. So we had all of these, including the one at the top, and then I let you all decide which one we would do. We did the one at the top, that cool desert scene. Let's uh, turn these all off. And then, not only did you get to choose the reference I'd be working on, but also the color palette. So let's jump into those. Turn those on, maybe. Oh, I know what happened. There we go. And you get to choose the color palette. So you chose the one on the top right. So I had to do the reference photo in that color palette. And then there was a third layer of the challenge, which was to only use the lasso tool to make my shapes, specifically the polygonal lasso tool. So this is where we ended up uh, yesterday. Let me turn off all of the layers that we do not need. So we drew out our sketch using just the, the lasso tool. Looks kind of like Flintstones-esque, right? Or like I said yesterday, Hanna-Barbera-ish. Susie has iced coffee. No wonder you're so hyper, Susie. No wonder. Sam's got his usual water. Larry's got water. Mocha coffee. Ooh. Tatiana said, I spent the whole night in fresco. Never went to bed. Are you serious? You're kidding. That's amazing. I'd love to see what you made. That's like um, in art school, we would do these challenges where we would have a blank sketchbook and have to fill it up in 24 hours. By the end of it, you had some weird drawings. I'll tell you what. <laughs> What's up, Aunt Christine? I think I met you on Twitter today, perhaps. Super cool. Angela, first time here for the sketch party. Awesome. I was just explaining uh, where we stopped yesterday. So we did this sketch. I have a couple different layers going on. We were deciding what colors our foreground and our background should be. And then I started in by adding these large areas of uh, vegetation. So we kind of decided that instead of using green for like the, the foliage and the, the greenery, we would use the dark purple value in our color palette. And we started using some nice textured brushes to add some, of, some hints of like vertical growth. So you don't have to literally draw every single little stem, you can just use vertical texture. And then we started adding some more vertical texture. And this was cool. Remember, we filled it all in with the texture and then started erasing from the bottom with the same texture. So it blends in pretty nicely. We also added some of our blooms. So we had the cute little like square blooms that are these magenta ones. And then we added in the orangey yellowy ones, like those flowery 
what look like kind of like wind flowers on the bottom right. So let's just keep going. Let's see how far we can get in an hour. Since we kind of figured out a lot of the workflow yesterday, I think I'm going to be able to work pretty quickly. But you never know. It's only an hour, so it's going to be an adventure. Moving my iPad over a little bit. Greetings, greetings. Angela, it's your first time here. Welcome to the party. Good to have you all. So I'd love to hear how your days are going. It's Tuesday, and I'm guessing it's already Wednesday for some of you. What did you do? What did you learn? Did you do anything creative? Or did you do anything soul nourishing? On your iPad Pro, the dark purple appears as black. Interesting. So there is some really dark, almost black going on here. But there is also that purple behind it. What's up, Anna? Good to have you. Let's build in some more of those vegetation banks behind the ones that we already have going on. I'm just gonna make a new layer, drag it below, and then go to our selection tool. And let's make a selection, shall we? So remember to use the polygonal lasso tool. All you do is tap to drop a point. And if I wanted to then start selecting like with the normal selection tool, I could just start drawing like that. And it's still the same selection. I'm gonna make sure that I'm going behind that entire thing. And I'll also select this area over here. this going on. Bless you to whoever sneezed outside. <laughs> Anybody else's allergies going crazy for the last like two days? Oof. Okay, and then let's fill in our color. So since this is going to be touching another bank of flowers, I might want to go even darker with this. Uh, so that there's some differentiation between them. Let's go to our brush. Remember we were using the letter rake to get that good texture. So I'm gonna go down here to this bottom dark layer and let's start filling that in. i turn my flow all the way up, make my brush pretty big. Let's add some of that. We'll come back in with that lighter purple too. Don't you worry. I'm pretty much keeping it as vertical as I can. All right, grabbing the lighter purple. Coming in from the top. Filling her in. And I might even go in one more time with the dark from the bottom. Just slowly building up the texture as I go. It's okay that it's a little bit see-through. That just means the ground plane that we haven't laid down yet will show through behind it. All right. And I'm just adding in some of that darkness. You're loving the lasso tool? Awesome. Me too. It's one of my favorite tools. I think a lot of people use the lasso tool just to select things. Like it's more of a, it's like a housekeeping tool, but I really use it almost like a brush. It's like my pair of scissors and I'm making a collage. All right, and then jumping back into that super dark one more time. Coming up from the bottom. Larry says, I'm wanting to learn more about doing creative art and digital art. Very cool. This is about as creative as it gets. You're in the right place. We're fig figuring it out on the fly. And then learning things and using those learnings to inform the rest of our workflow. It's pretty cool. 
All right, uh, Larry went on a ride with your bike into town. That sounds awesome. It's such a beautiful day today in San Francisco. I kind of want to do the same thing after work. Just catching up on what you all were doing today. Okay, Tatiana, you actually stayed up all night. It was an illustration for a gift certificate for your friend, so you had to get it done today. Oh, I'd love to see it. That is a really big friendship move that you stayed up all night to finish that illustration. Good for you. What kind of pad and pen are you using? I am using the iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. Your palette is so soft and amazing. Thanks, Angela. You guys picked it. So good job to you. Okay, we have our second bank of flowers. So let's start adding in some of our little sprouts. And we can do this pretty quick since we kind of know how to do it. We figured out our workflow. Whoa, not that. For the most part, I'm using little sections of four. See how this goes. Fill in this middle ground with them. Close that and start painting. I'm gonna grab that light purple. What's up, Anthony? Ooh, Steven, good question. You're wondering, what was it that made you realize that you were good at art? What made you think, yeah, I could do this? I am so interested to hear everybody's answer. While everyone else is answering, I guess I can throw my answer in the pot. Uh, it's definitely always been something that I liked. Some of my earliest memories are like coloring and coloring books and drawing my own drawings. But I think one of the things that really spurred my love for art, like when I was little, little, like a toddler, was the fact that my older brother liked to draw. And I was actually right-handed when I was little, like I was learning to be right-handed, but he was left-handed. And I would see him drawing and I wanted to be just like him, so I started drawing left-handed too, I think. I think this is why. And now, I draw with my left hand. Super weird. I'm gonna go to clear. One of the earliest things I can remember drawing is like um, drawing new outfits for the characters in coloring books. Like they would already have clothes on, but I'd be like, no, 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 I don't like that. I'm gonna draw my own. So I would just like, instead of coloring in the coloring book, I would just draw new clothes on the characters. Cause I've been into fashion the whole time. So no wonder fashion illustration is one of my favorite things to do. All right, we've got our little pokies. Just the joy of making things realize made you realize, Susie? Nice. I feel like for some people, making things does not bring them joy. It might be more stressful than fun. Chad says, my first drawings were dinosaurs with crayons. That's so funny. One of my first memories of a coloring book, I was coloring in a dinosaur holding a toothbrush. I remember it very vividly. I was at preschool. So other than drawing left-handed, you're normal. <laughs> uh, I eat and I draw and I brush my teeth with my left hand, but I like throw a ball with my right hand. My right arm is stronger too. Thanks, Bernadette. Appreciate it. All right, let's add some flowers. Gonna unlock this. Sam says, I saw online sketchbooks with concept art and saw the improvement that was being documented. Oh, so part of the improvement is part of what made you feel like, yeah, I could do this. I love that attitude. It's great. We're going to focus more on the flowery shaped flowers, the yellowy ones for this background. And since they are farther away, they are going to be a little smaller. So they're going to be more of like blobs and less of squares. 
that makes sense. It's super easy to kind of zoom around your artboard on an iPad Pro. I'm just using two fingers and like panning around. I want it to look organic, so some of them have to be a little closer to each other than others. They shouldn't be just like perfectly placed. Aw, oh, Anna, what's up? Love the colors, thank you. The chat picked them for me. Well, I originally got the color theme from color.adobe.com. If you guys don't know about that site, it's a super great way to get color palettes and you can grab color palettes from any photo or any inspiration piece. But I usually just like browse the community themes and maybe search a search term or two. Term or two. <laughs> and find some that I like. Then let's throw some kind of above the horizon line of the plants as well. Just panning around. And then yesterday we played a little bit with using this tool. It's like the paintbrush selection tool. So you can literally draw and not have to worry about closing your lasso. So let's focus some of these over here. You love how the art piece is turning out? Yay! I'm excited to see if anybody else is working alongside me. I believe it was, it's Chance who was posting on Instagram yesterday, super beautiful illustrations. I was like, what, you made that? So much better than mine. <laughs> you made a joke yesterday because this tool can't do rounded corners and we'd be getting Lego flowers, but you totally take it back, nice. I mean, I did say that I was just gonna be using the polygonal lasso tool, but it's kind of turned into all selection tools are good. They're all kosher here. As I always say, this is our world. We can do what we want. The client is you and the client is me. All right, let's fill in some of these colors. This is the, I think, part, partly the funnest part or mostly the, the most fun part. <laughs> Where you just get to fill in the shapes that you already made. Let's throw some of the yellow in. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller so we have a little more control. Not all of them will get the yellow treatment. Can you show us how to make color palettes in color.adobe.com? Maybe. I can try and do it on the iPad, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty self-explanatory. Let me see if I can do it on the iPad after I finish this. All right, and we added one more color, the color from the original flowers, just as kind of like a, a quasi shadow, just on the edges in some areas. Add some over here, and there. Oops, too much. And I forgot to add yellow over here. I forgot I even had these selected. So maybe they'll just be orange and red. Let's see how it looks when I finish. You haven't mastered this yet. It's hard to do with a mouse with a laptop. True, especially if you're trying to get the texture, but the mouse is probably the best tool to use with the polygonal lasso tool. Instead of tapping with your hand, it's much easier to just click with your finger. 
Okay, let's deselect. Thumbs up, looking good. You have to leave the live, but you'll catch up later. Thanks, Kathleen, I love the sketch and the fresco tool for drawing. So glad to hear that, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. All right, let's start adding some of these middle tones, like in here. Done, just kidding. <laughs> that texture though, Anna, you know. You know about the texture. All right, let's make a new layer. And this is gonna be fun. We're gonna be able to use the selection tools really nicely here, maybe using some blend modes as well. So I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and I'm just looking at the reference to see kind of where shadow and light is on the ground. So for example, over here, it's a little bit more shadowed. And there's kind of shadow near where the vegetation is because it's dipped into the ground a little bit. So we'll add it here as well. All right, let's add in some of it. Now we don't have really a cool color to use for our ground. So I'm gonna use a really grayed out purple, I think. We'll see how that looks. We might mix that with an orange for the highlights. So I'm going to grab that color. We might bump up the saturation a little bit, turn the brightness down just a touch. Let's just fill, fill it in. It scared me. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> cool. I like that. Maybe we can now grab this color, turn the saturation way down, the brightness more up. I mean, that's kind of a straight up gray, right? Maybe we can use some big texture here, even bigger, not that big. <laughs> there we go. So I'm keeping it pretty horizontal. And then I'm gonna even grab this color, turn the brightness up, saturation down, maybe brightness a little down too. Finding that sweet spot. and layering it over just a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this totally, but let's just try it. It's its own layer, so we can always delete it if we don't like it. And beneath that, just gonna make a big selection. And we can just fill it in with, let's try this. Hmm, kind of looks like the ground's lava. We can try this. Turn the saturation down. Not bad, not bad. Hive mind. <laughs> Keith says I just got back from a virtual meeting. This is nice. Thanks, Keith. It's actually good that I have this preview on the monitor. I can see it a little bit better. Maybe we'll keep it more purple. Stick with this. And then, I can grab this. Throw some colors in here. Purple on that, or the orange on the purple is a really interesting combination. And go back to this, lock the layer, transparency. Bring this brightness up. We might even change our blend mode to multiply. 
We're going to turn the flow down a lot. Interesting. Very interesting. So it's hard to draw on a smaller size screen, uh, the 10.5 versus the 11 or the 12.9. Um, it just depends, I guess, how much you want to zoom around and zoom into your work. I think I prefer the larger screens, like if I have a choice, but the difference isn't that great. There's not that big of a difference, I would say. You build this doing layers with doing layers? Yep, totally. Nice thing about frescoes, you can have almost as many layers as you want. Let's see, turn that off. And you can just go, go for it. Nice. So this isn't super realistic, but I am digging how it looks. There's not much about this ground that is realistic, so we have that on our side. And then I'm going to choose this color. Paint it through a little bit. And go back to this color, and we'll turn down our flow a lot. Cool. Our desert is becoming rainbow sands. Now let's add in some of these larger little, larger little, these areas, the, the bush or the shrubs up here at the top. Let's start putting those in. So they'll be dark value, but they won't be the same as this purple because we want them to look different. So first I'll go in and select some shapes. And I think this will work well if I select a couple different shapes and do it by layer. I'm gonna just pretty much roughly select the shapes that I've already selected. Maybe change it up a little bit. We'll add a base color and then make some new selections. Cool. Let's go for maybe the orange. I go a little less saturated. And I'm just going to fill it in. Easy. Now let's do another selection. This is what I meant by doing kind of layers. If I do it like this, we can build a little bit of dimension. Anthony says I prefer the smaller screens. Nice, yeah, definitely a little easier to wield. Does one wield a tablet? Makes it sound like a weapon. Ooh, the Wacom One. It's a new mid-price one with the screen. I was thinking about that. It's definitely thinking about that, Steve. I think I mentioned in another stream that when we heard that we were going to be working from home, um, I left my tablet at my desk at work. So I was like, well, should I get a Wacom One? <laughs> I kind of need something, but have an iPad Pro. That works just fine. All right, so this is how we're gonna add depth. I'm gonna go back to my brush. I'm gonna use the same color, but I'm gonna make sure my blend mode is on multiply so that when I color over this, it's gonna be a similar, but just a little bit deeper. And I'm just building it up slowly. Now, if I deselect this, and then lock the transparency, I can add some of that texture to the shapes behind as well. So I'm gonna grab the red. It 
So it kind of starts to bleed into that second selection we made. But in some areas, it remains, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm going to make a selection and put some purple in here. I'm going to unlock our transparency. See Terry White's review of the Wacom One? No. <laughs> I wonder if he likes it or not. I wonder if he what he's using it for too. Would it be uh, photo editing? Another round of selections because these shapes ended up being pretty bright, highly saturated. We're gonna tone them down with another layer. Like I said, of a more purple. I'm just tapping. You just published on Behance if you're curious. Oh, cool. I'm going to click on it right now. I want to see it. It's so cute, Tatiana. I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can click each other's uh, faces within the chat and that'll take you to Behance portfolios. Dude, this is cute. So did you use the vector brushes? That's awesome. Great job, Tatiana. Worth staying up all night. Well, maybe. Few things are worth staying up all night, in my opinion. I'm an old lady who likes her sleep. Okay. Let's grab our purple. Really like these kind of purples that we're going on down here. I'm going to change the blend mode just back to normal. And then with the entire layer selected, we will lock the transparency one more time. I'm going to grab this really light lavender and do some painting up from the bottom. Ooh, that was too much. Double finger tap to undo. I'll zoom in. Looks awesome so far. Amazing what iPads are capable of these days. I know, the iPad's doing all the work. <laughs> Make it a little bit bigger. All night long. All night. Tim, are, you're staying up all night right now. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> but thanks for being here. You are a beast, you no need sleep. You need no sleep, you no need sleep. <laughs> Tatiana says, I always struggle with getting started literally with every project. I just always doubt myself and end up wasting most of my time redoing things and starting over a zillion times. Oof, that sounds really tiring. Your poor brain. For me, for getting started on projects, it takes me a long time because I have a, like, a million different ideas of the direction it could go and they're so different that it's like if I choose this all those other ideas that I have are never going to happen and they're too different to incorporate so it takes me a long time to kind of weed through what I think is my best idea and what I've learned is that I'm usually never going to be able to land <laughs> on what I think is my best idea and I just need to choose one and go. Cool. So we're covering a lot of that highly saturated uh, pixel areas, but they're kind of peeking through, which is nice. Very cool. So now we can put a layer on top of this and make some more organic selections to make these look more like shrubs and less like rocks. Tims don't require sleep. Tims are time lords. All right, using our selection tool. Let's 
making some selections within here. So they are shrubby and less rocky. Put some here at the bottom. There we go. So I got through most of the day today thinking that it was Wednesday. Anybody else? I'm glad I realized it wasn't because Monday and Tuesday is sketch party days. <laughs> Put a big one up front here. I really like this one. Got some nice dimension to it with those different layers. Close, please. There we go. And then let's add in our shapes. So I'm going to grab this purple to tie them all together. Turn the flow up, flow up. And now I'm just kind of filling it in just a little bit. Each little bunch seriously takes like maybe two or three very light strokes. Maybe even one. If I'm extra efficient. <laughs> Your meetings keep you updated on what day of the week it is. Mine should too, but still. Still I am confused. Time becomes more and more flat as we go. <laughs> you look at the date a lot more now with the quarantine thing? Really? Just so you can stay more abreast of like... What day is it really? Oops. I'm doing that to get a little bit of a lighter feel to it. Let's deselect it, see how it looks. Very nice, very scrubby and scratchy. Steve, it is Wednesday for you. There you go. What's up, boy fruit? I came to party. Is this the place? I don't know. You tell me. By the way, boy fruit, great job on getting your Behance projects updated and uploaded. You said you might do it, and you did. Very proud of you. I'm just going to add a couple more areas that feel kind of sparse. Sometimes it does that. And then we can move on to the mountains in the background. It's going to be so cool. Itchy nose. Okay. Dropping little bits and pieces in here. Trying to make them blend in. There we go. Cool. Marcel, hello. Steve says, I wake up super early for the Adobe streams and it feels like noon by stream five, but it's only 9 a.m. Steve, you wake up for the Adobe streams? I always thought that you watched them because you're up anyways. That's super cool. That's awesome. VIP. <laughs> Keith, Behance keeps becoming enhance. Enhance, enhance. Enhance. <laughs> you did like two projects, Kathleen. I barely made an effort. Let's be honest here. You made an effort though, even if it was barely an effort. And for that, I am proud of you. OK. 
Okie doke. Let's add in the ground underneath. Making a lunar, a new layer. Let's select. And I'm just going to start painting in with a bigger brush than this. Don't worry, I will put it behind the shrubs in a moment. Ooh, that textury noise. Do you hate it or do you love it? <laughs> Let's take a poll. Right now I'm kind of hating it because it's all I can hear. This is kind of covering up some of those flowers. So not to worry. We'll go back and choose maybe well maybe we will keep it that color. We'll go to the orange. Oh, whoops. That's fine, that's fine. Picked up the wrong color, but I don't hate it. And now let's move this below. And keep darkening it at the top. Whoops. So our little shrubs are easy to see. Nice. Our ground is being built. Marcel, not bad at all. Glad you think that it is not bad at all. <laughs> oh, Tatiana says thanks so much for everyone for being so nice. That's what you can expect here on Adobe Live. Everybody is nice. See you later. I hope you get some good sleep. I can't believe you've stayed up for 36 hours. Although your record is 51 hours. Oh my gosh. I think my record's probably closer to like 36. I'm a big baby. I need a lot of sleep. We're gonna darken it up just right at the bottoms. Maybe we should do the same some of the areas down here. Cool. This is really feeling like, kind of like a pastel painting. Almost like a palette knife. Sharp areas of texture. <laughs> and Steve likes the sound. Ooh. I don't think I ever even pulled an all-nighter in um, art school. I refused. I was like, it's not worth it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Does this work on a Surface? It's great. I think this does work on a Windows Surface devices. Thanks, Bradley. Appreciate it. I'm going to be out of here in 10 minutes, and that is a surprise to me. I thought I had way more time. <laughs> Let's do a new layer and add that little strip of light right below the mountains. So you see like right below where the mountains start. There's some light hitting the ground there. So we can do that too. We'll put this layer beneath uh, pretty much everything. Grab our yellow, fill it in. Don't worry, I will move the layer. Just drag it. Boom. Okay, it is mountain time. New layer. You know I love my new layers. Let's draw in a selection for our mountain range. And this is going to be fun because we're going to do some highlights, some shadows. 
a couple different layers of this to really make it seem like this is going back in space. We'll see how far we can get before time runs out because I think Ben Marriott's gonna be up after me, which is super cool. Ben's an amazing motion producer and designer and illustrator, and he makes really, really good um, tutorials on YouTube too, if you've ever wanted to know how to animate with After Effects or use Illustrator or Photoshop assets in animations, check him out, he's gonna be up after me. All right, let's fill this in with Our brightest color, one of the brightest colors. Whoa! And then we can deselect it, lock the transparency, and let's draw in our shadows. So the shadows take up kind of the majority of the mountain range, and then the light is hitting more like near the top. So I'm going to paint in the shadows with this dark purple, go a little bit lighter, just going to pretty much fill this in, and then I'll go a little bit darker still with multiply. Deselect that and then make some new. Actually, we're going to add to our selection to add some of these, like kind of rivets and uh, peaks and valleys within the mountain. Let's see how this looks. Gonna go for normal for now. Oops. It's unbelievable how quick I work. I was reading the comments and the canvas transformed completely. Thank you. I have always been kind of a fast painter. Just like to get it down and see how it looks. But also, we've kind of worked out a workflow for this, so I know how to tackle a lot of the visual issues. And if it doesn't look good, then we just change it. And then with this still selected, I'm going to go over everything with this. Let's see how that looks. Toning it down a little bit. Then we will keep things dark down here near the shrubs so that they are still legible. We'll go for a multiply, turn our flow down. And work on that. What's up, Flynn? Good to see ya. I know that there's a live stream coming up right after me. <laughs> How can you create this in under an hour, Kathleen? Amazing. It's all because of you guys. Alright, let's turn off our sketch layers. Let's add in our sky and I think we're going to be done. Cool. This would make a good uh, ba desktop background. <laughs> I 
You guys are funny. Just f filling myself in on the chat. I think that this whole this was a big challenge with this color palette specifically because there's no like I really wanted a blue the whole time. There's definitely cool colors because we have all this purple going on, but since we're using the purple in a lot of places, it's hard to differentiate between it and then areas that I want it to be cool. So that has certainly been a challenge. Not having a green was obviously a challenge because there's a lot of green in here, but I think we kind of, we managed. Let's do like a purple and yellow sky. That sounds good. On a new layer, let's throw this in in the last couple minutes that I have. I am just going to make some clouds, baby. Make sure my blend mode is normal, not multiply, please. Fill this in. Make a new selection. Trying to fill up the entire sky, but just with a couple different shapes. So there's almost some like fragmentation going on. I'm gonna make this just a little bit lighter. Just so there's a little bit of differentiation. There we go. And where the edges are, I will press a little bit harder so we can really see. And then I'll fill in the rest of these white spots. Get them going. A little bit harder at the edge. Harder at the edge. Okay, and then we can add some yellow. Your wife was very impressed with my work and you were too. Thanks very much. Even if we're using the lasso tool to make our shapes, it's still painting, right? I hope this shows you that you can be a dig digital painter in many different ways. Shapes and forms. Let's grab our yellow. I'm gonna go a little bit. Actually, let's do a super saturated edge. And then we'll go lighter in the middle. So again, I'm kind of hitting the edge where those uh, lasso selections are. Getting that saturation going. And then we'll go much lighter for the inside. Let's try changing our blend mode, maybe to overlay. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, yeah, I've got a little bit of glow going on. Bit of a glow getter. We'll do one more round of selections. And that's it. Every time I zoom in, I say, enhance, lightning bolt. This is where I really wish I had some blue. I'd love to have some like turquoise just peeking out over the tips of these mountains. That would be so cool. All right, I'm gonna go even more towards just plain old yellow. One more selection round, one more. I've got one more minute. This is so fun. I love layering these shapes on top of each other. All right, as much as I don't wanna stop, I know I have to let Ben come on here. So there is our finished work. Thank you, everybody. This has been so fun. Thanks for helping me with the challenge and choosing my reference imagery. That was super cool. You helped me pick the color palette. Had no idea how it was going to turn out, and I think it turned out smashingly. So maybe I'll post this on Instagram. Like I mentioned at the start of the screen, or the stream, you can follow me on Instagram at Kathleen Illustrated. 
Um, I am not going to be back next Monday with Sketch Party, I don't think, but I am going to be streaming on my own personal Behance. So if you want to come back this weekend, um, I'm going to be streaming on Behance on Saturday and Sunday. And then I'm going to head out right now and let Ben come on and show us some good, good animation magic. So thanks, everybody. This was really fun. Follow me up, uh, share your work with me, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye, everybody.